Anin, Ojo, Sarah Hazel Dijnikaz, Nabizing Donjaba. Uh, hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Hazel and I'm from Nipissing First Nation. I am also the project manager for the Canadian Archaeological Association's uh, working group on unmarked graves. And today I'm going to be talking to you about our recommendations for recording and presenting the findings of remote sensing methods in the search for unmarked graves. Before we get started, I just would like to bring your attention to our online resources. We have two comprehensive guides, a non-technical which focuses on investigation planning and a technical guide that focuses on remote sensing. And you can access both of these guides at the website listed here on this slide. Unmarked graves investigations can bring up distressing content and it is important to have mental and emotional health supports in place while doing this work. Please make sure you have health supports in place or you can call one of the numbers on the slide if you are feeling triggered and you can speak to a health professional. And I'll just leave this up for a couple of moments in case you want to write one of these numbers down. Whether you choose to get training and conduct the remote sensing surveys yourself, or you decide to outsource the geophysical work, there are different kinds of information that should be included in the final reports that will help your investigation in any future potential paths. Importantly, it is undeniable that children died and went missing from Indian residential schools. Therefore, communities are not obliged for any reason to disclose the number of potential burials found during an investigation. However, if a community decides to make their investigation results public, it is best to wait until the final report is submitted rather than releasing preliminary findings. The following recommendations are applicable to any remote sensing method that is used. Copies of unprocessed raw data will be important for a number of reasons, including testing the replicability of the results, meaning that another expert would be able to duplicate the results by analyzing the original data. Your site description should include underlying soil types and geology, ground conditions and vegetation, descriptions of built architecture, past disturbances including previous archaeological investigations, and known underground services that it might impact the results. Include photographs of each survey area showing the ground conditions. The survey methodology should provide a description of the instrumentation or devices and survey procedures used. Also, your report should include a map showing the location of survey grids in relation to other features at the site. All location maps must be geo-referenced and annotated with the geographic coordinate system and projection used so that the location of the grids can be re-established by a third party. Plots of minimally processed or raw data should be shown in comparison with final processed areas of interest. All data processing steps should be described in full and their effects on the data highlighted. And anomalies resulting from data collection errors that cannot be removed through data processing should be described and distingu distinguished from other responses. For GPR and inversion ERT data, depth estimates of features should be included. Interpretations should distinguish between anthropogenic or human-related activities from natural features identified in the data. Grayscale plots are usually recommended over false color maps due to the eye's ability to better differentiate subtle detail in black and white than color. False color can, however, be useful in instances where delineation of features of interest might benefit from highlighting through color. All plots should include a north arrow, range bar including appropriate values and units, and be presented in and include an appropriate scale for interpretation. Interpreted plans indicating all features of interest should be included alongside the data plots. Anomalies of interest should be identified with a unique identifier on the plots and described in full to indicate shape and signal amplitude. 
This might be best achieved in a table rather than a long descriptive narrative. The findings of an investigation may involve one or more community presentations. The results will be triggering for many people, therefore it is important to make sure that there are mental health supports in place at the meetings. At any community presentation, jargon should be avoided and you should be careful to use accessible language. There may be community members attending whose second language is English. It is extremely important if you are an outsourced specialist to ask about cultural protocols for having a meeting, and this may include an opening prayer and smudging, among other types of ceremony. Do not underestimate the role of food and drink at gatherings. No matter the occasion, it is customary to have snacks and coffee, tea, and juice in a meeting. However, this might be provided by the community. It's best to be prepared and have a discussion with the community representatives about what is expected. Miigwech! Thank you for joining me for this module on remote sensing reporting. For your convenience, I've included the link to our website at the top of this slide. Thank you and take care.